government claims today's rise in childcare payments on universal credit will help support families. But it comes as nurseries struggle to even stay open. As we've been reporting this morning, the government's spending watchdog has warned that students are at risk of crumbling school buildings. Mm. Now, Children's Minister Claire Coutinho is in Wester, Westminster. Good morning, Minister. Um, morning. Let's start with the announcement over universal credit. It, it's been long coming. It is an increase in the amount that people can claim if they pay for childcare when they're on universal credit. And it will support... I'm supportive of the general changes, many people. Tell us how it's going to work. So, at the moment, when you're on universal credit and you start a job uh, and you have to pay childcare costs, you get that back in your second salary. For lots of families, that was really difficult because it meant that they were struggling uh, to juggle their family finances. So now you'll be able to get help up front. So that first childcare bill you'll be able to get direct support with. And we've also increased the amount that you can get by about 50%. So if you've got one child, uh, you can get support of £950. And if you've got two or more children, you get help of £16,030. And people can claim up to 85% of their childcare costs. So this, exactly. is, this is a good move for people on universal credit. But there are still very substantial numbers of people who are still on legacy benefits and on the old tax credit system, where the limits there, if we contrast it now for one child, on universal credit, you can claim up to £951 a month. But if you're on the old legacy benefit system, you can only claim up to £530 a month. Why have you not made it equal for those on legacy benefits? Why do they have to miss out on this substantial uplift? Are they not worthy of the childcare help? Um, you know, at the moment what we're doing is we're moving people onto universal credit. I would say if someone's looking at these different schemes, they should, you know, they should go and talk to their job coach, go and talk to their uh, uh, DWP job centre to, to see what's the right decision for them. But overall, this is a good story for, for people on universal credit. And it's part of our wider investment that we're making into childcare, which is the single largest ever investment so, into childcare to help people. Forgive me, Minister, the question is why aren't you uplifting it for tax credits as well for the people who are still on the legacy benefits? Well, as I said, we are trying to move people onto to universal credit, um, but we have, I should say, increased benefits overall this year uh, by inflation, and we've done that child, across childcare. We're talking but about we've done that across costs. all benefits. But yes. you, you haven't uplifted the child. You've no, uplifted universal no, credit haven't. by fifty percent. You haven't uplifted tax credits by fifty percent. You haven't uplifted them at all. Uh, no, we, we haven't in increased the, the childcare offer for legacy, but we have done it for universal credit. As I said, we are moving in a process of moving people onto universal credit. But I would say that if someone is on legacy benefits and looking at the, the childcare offer, they should go and talk to their advisor about uh, what's the right choice for them. They should do, and there will be some people who will be better off switching, but it can be quite a difficult decision because if you have any debt, that can be taken through the universal credit system, but it can't through the legacy benefit system. No one should do it without taking advice. I will agree with you on that. Th there is the problem, though, that we hear, you know, you're also at the same time, the plan is to increase state-funded childcare substantially, what's commonly known as free childcare, but of course it still has to be paid for. Um, but many, many childcare providers simply say you're not paying enough and they don't have the resources. How are you going to fix that issue? So one of the things that we are doing is doubling the amount that we spend on those childcare entitlements by 2027, uh, 2028, so over the next few years. So that is a significant increase in the amount uh, that's going into the childcare sector. And we're starting with additional funding going in this year and then extra funding next year as well. And I've been around the country, I've been talking to lots of, of nurseries, people in the sector, uh, and we're trying to help them not only with funding, and you know we've been doing some very careful work uh, with them to look at the cost, but also with all the other things that they might be struggling with, like workforce uh, and other parts of the system as well. Because we're really, really, uh, really keen to make sure that no one sees childcare as a barrier to work. Yeah, trouble is, you might be too late. National Day Nurseries Association analysis shows a 87% rise in the number of nurseries shutting down between April and December last year, compared with the same period in the year before. According to Ofsted, more than 5,000 early year settings closed in the year to August 2022. Um, I mean, the head of the Early Years Alliance says the sector is on its knees. And, of course, if you have lower provision, that is not going to help anybody. So, so let me uh, unpack some of those things because it has been a challenging time for nurseries and that's why we are putting additional funding in and we have been putting additional funding in for the last couple of years. 
And when you talk about the 5,000 settings, the vast majority of that is childminders. And that's why we've got a new scheme, a grant scheme to incentivise childminders to come back to the market, because we know they're really important. They get great educational outcomes, but they also give parents a lot of uh, flexibility. Uh, but in terms of nurseries, some of the work that we've done now, as I said, is a radical change that we're making, the, the investment that we're putting in, is to work uh, to understand the situation that nurseries are facing in terms of finances. So we've surveyed 10,000 uh, different uh, providers. We've also got a survey of 6,000 parents to really get the data to understand the costs that nurseries are facing. And if you look at something like the hourly rates, which is how we, we pay for the entitlements, the three to four year old rate will be going up 7% this year. Uh, the two-year-old rate, which traditionally has been a, a smaller part of, of government funding, but we're now massively expanding the, the amount of people that will be able to, to access uh, support for, for their two-year-olds in terms of uh, childcare, that's going up from £6 to £8 on average in September. And then next year, we'll have the entitlement for children under two, between nine months and two, which will kick in. And that will be at a, a rate of £11. And the sector has broadly uh, welcomed and said that those rates for the younger years uh, have been significant uh, and it will help yeah. because those well, are where you actually, have the higher the costs. The sector is saying staff are leaving in droves, they're exhausted and they're frustrated that they are just told to take on more children rather than adequately reward their staff. Well, look, I spend a lot of my time talking to nurseries and, you know, some of the organisations that you have mentioned, and they do broadly welcome the fact that we are significantly increasing the amount that we are spending on childcare. Like I said, we'll be doubling the amount we spend on it over the next few years, putting four billion extra pounds into it. But in terms of staff, I completely recognise it's a challenge. It definitely comes up when I go around and talk to people in terms of recruitment and retention. Uh, and I've already set out some flexibilities we announced a few weeks ago, which we worked very closely with the sector on to make sure that we've got the right okay. people at every single part of the qualification system so that nurseries can provide that extra childcare yes, so that they need. We only have a little time with you left. I've got three questions, if, if we can do them quickly. First of all, tax-free childcare is available for working families, but it has a terrible take-up rate. What are you going to do to make sure more people are aware of it and to make the system easier? This is where people get effectively, if, you know, if you're a work to a working family yes. or a single parent or both working, you can get 20p in the pound towards your childcare costs. Take-up rates are horrendous. So the take-up rate has actually gone up massively in the last few years. I think it was 172,000 a few years ago and it went up to about 500,000. But there is much more to do. So I would urge any parent who thinks uh, they're eligible to go and look at childcare choices, which will help you, because it does, as you say, it does give you a significant saving on your childcare. I, 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 I would echo that. I would support doing so. Uh, my next question, Minister, I believe you have um, responsibility for special educational needs and disabilities. I do. There are... 80,000 parents of children with disabilities and special educational needs whose children are now 18 and have child trust funds who are unable to access the child trust fund money that was given by the state that's on average around £2,000 without going through the expensive, timely and stressful process of going to the court of protection to help their kids get access to the money once they're adults. Are you going to do something to fix this horrendous problem for the parents of disabled and special educational need children who can't access their own money? So, I mean, I've been looking at the overall system for SEND. I'm not aware of that particular issue. If you don't mind, I will take that away and go and have a, a look at it. Um, but the work that we're doing is to try and make sure that the school system and every part of the system that supports children with SEND and disability works. We know it's a struggle for parents uh, and we're very much focused on that. But I will take that away. I will have my team send you a briefing note by the end of the week and hopefully we can get something sorted out. Final question. Schools, we get reports today, school buildings are crumbling. They're not safe for children to be in. 700,000 children in England attending schools requiring major repairs and there are critical risks to the safety of pupils and staff. You're the children's minister. Mm -hmm. How comfortable are you that children are in classrooms with that kind of risk? So no no um, children are in classrooms which pose an imminent risk. Uh, where we do uh, know of an imminent risk, we act very swiftly. So if you look at the, the programme that we've got, the Schools Rebuilding Programme, we ask schools to nominate themselves and uh, schools have put themselves forward. And any school which was judged to be an exceptional need is now in that programme to be worked on. So we do take this very seriously. We work very closely with schools on it to make sure that no child uh, is at risk at school. But yes, we do have an ageing estate. It's really important that we tackle we spent £15 billion Sorry, on the school... just to interrupt, the National Audit Office says the government doesn't have sufficient information to manage 
the risk of safety of pupils so and staff? At the, at the moment, we work with schools, so they give us information. And when we um, have put out, for example, on the schools rebuilding program, calls for nominations, every single school which came forward and said um, they've got an exceptional need, we've addressed that. We do rely on schools to come forward and say, actually, we think we, we need some help, and then we take some action. But schools also have access to a different sort of pots of, of capital that they can use to make sure they can maintain their estates. Um, as I said, we've spent £15 billion on that since 2015, as well as having the targeted programmes like the Skills Rebuilding Programme to act swiftly where it's needed. Uh, we have to leave it there. I can hear head teachers shouting at the television as we do, but Claire Continuo, Children's Minister, thank you very much indeed you for, for joining time. us this morning.